this house this evening. I invite you to open up your Bibles to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 20, 15. So thankful for what I feel. I'm confident the Lord Jesus Christ is going to do a great work this evening. Anybody else feel that in your spirit? Thank you, Jesus. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. I'm going to be reading out of the New King James, if we can put that up. I know I just sprung that on you, but 2 Chronicles 20, 15 through 18. Out of the New King James, then I'm going to skip down to 21. Amen. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Aren't you glad you don't have to fight? Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Let's skip down to verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Victory is imminent. Amen. Let's go to Numbers 23, 21, if you would. This is going to be out of the NIV. I'm jumping all over the place. Forgive me for that. Numbers 23, 21. Then we're going to go to the book of Psalms, and we'll conclude the scripture reading for this evening. Numbers 23, 21, out of the NIV. No misfortune is seen in Jacob, no misery observed in Israel. The Lord their God is with them. The shout of the king is among them. Psalms 47 and 1, out of the New King James, you all know it very well. Oh, clap all your hands. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. Will you clap your hands into the Lord? Amen. I invite you to be seated. Going to talk to you tonight for just a moment about spiritual equipment for the battle. Spiritual equipment for the battle. If you are not aware of it, if you are not already engaged in it, and if you are a Christian, you need to understand that we are engaged in a war. It's not a picnic. It's not a playground. It's not a skirmish. This battle is not for the faint of heart. The timid and the squeamish need not enlist. And you and I can fight. We can't fight this battle until we get tired. We have to fight this battle until we die. Because it is a life and a death struggle. We are indeed in a battle this evening. We're in a battle for the wages. Of, we're waging for the souls of men. It's a battle of good versus evil, if you will. But I'm thankful to be a part of the church because I know we will indeed be victorious. You think about all the technological advancements that we have enjoyed over the recent decades, in particular the smartphone, it's positioned itself to where it's a, a tool, really. It's really evolved to become a, a tool. Sure, you can take pictures with it, and you can text message. Hopefully, you all aren't doing that right now. And 
You can Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Vine and do video now with Instagram. You can do all of those things now. You can calendarize. You can make notes. You can search the web. And believe it or not, if you forgot, you can make a phone call with it too. I think we forgot about that. But anyway, it's so funny. You see everybody using a phone, but they rarely are talking on it. They're just like this. But anyway. One other cool thing we can do is we can check the weather depending upon the app that you have, or if you just want to go to your web browser on your smartphone. When I'm traveling, I like to check the weather of the site I'm going to be visiting in advance. If they're calling for rain in the forecast, depending upon the percentages, I'm going to bring my umbrella. If they're calling for cool spring-like conditions, then I may bring my jacket for the evenings. What the meteorologists, what they're calling for, determines how I pack my trip. You wouldn't bring, nor I would neither, a goose down parka if you were going to Maui. It's inappropriate for the conditions, hello? Most of us, I say most, I preface it with most, but most of us wouldn't go to a wedding in our jeans. I know Austin's a little casual, but most of us wouldn't do that. If I invited you over my house for a barbecue to grill and I enjoy, I just need an excuse to do it, you wouldn't wear a suit like you're wearing tonight. Why? Because it's inappropriate for the occasion. As Christians, we need to know what to wear to the war. Christians don't, we don't live by conventional wisdom, therefore we don't fight our battles with conventional weapons. The cause of Christ will never be advanced by carnal actions or carnal methods. Our spiritual weapons, weak by the world's standards, are more than sufficient to see us through to defeat the enemy. However, we can allow ourselves to engage in a spiritual battle with a carnal mindset. As a matter of fact, the enemy will attempt to, to trick some of us into thinking that because we've been in the church for a long time, we got some things down pack and we have some spiritual disciplines, he will convince us or trick us to thinking that we might be able to fight some battles on our own. Perhaps on our own volition, on our own strength, on our own willpower. The enemy, our advers the adversary of our souls, wants to get between you and your goal. He wants to get between you and your destiny. He wants to get between you and your inheritance, you and your ministry. Satan is in the business of placing things in our way. He sets up stumbling blocks, and he interferes, he fights. He is not in the business of taking prisoners. He ultimately wants to destroy you and I. There are no Geneva Convention rules in this fight. This is a bare-knuckles brawl, and if we are going to win, we need to realize what we have at our disposal. One of the things that I believe that is at the disposal of every spirit-filled believer is a shout unto Almighty God. Not only a shout, but a shout with a voice of triumph. What, what is it? What is it about a spirit-filled, apostolic, Pentecostal church? Why are we so demonstrative with our praise? Why are we so exuberant with our worship? Why do we make such a fuss about Jesus Christ and what he's done in our lives? I'll tell you why. Because we remember where he brought us from. We remember when we, were in, when we were in situations we could not get ourselves out of. We, MasterCard couldn't get us out of the situation, and Visa couldn't get us out of the situation, and our academic background couldn't get us out of the situation, and it didn't make no difference if it was Bobby or Susie, whoever you called, they couldn't help you. But at some point or another, you came to the understanding that you had to open up your mouth and seek after Almighty God, and it was Him who reached down and picked you up and got you up out of that mess you were in. That's why we understand worship is what we have. A shout unto Almighty God. It's what we give him. A shout is to shout with a voice of triumph. Triumph. To, to win or achieve success. Triumph. To experience the happiness pride or feeling of elation that comes from winning or overcoming something. 
A voice of triumph is a shout that is raised when a victory is obtained. It is a shout that is made when a victory is expected. It is a shout from somebody that knows who they are and where they are going. Now, shouting is not whimpering. Shouting, it is not silent. It is not gentle or genteel. Shouting with a voice of triumph, a loud shout, a demonstrative, expressive joy. It is something that God loves, and it's something that captures his attention, and I believe it delivers fear into our enemy. I'm trying to let you know this evening, the one, th one of the things, one of the tools that equip us for spiritual battle is a shout unto Almighty God, not in our own confidence, but shouting because we know the God we serve is victorious, honey. If he brought us out of the trial yesterday, he'll bring us out of the trial today. And if he'll bring me out of the trial today, I don't worry about what lies ahead. All I need to know is that I have a right to shout and to magnify God. Somebody clap your hands unto the Lord. Somebody go ahead and lift him up. Somebody bless him. I'm trying to tell you this evening, I don't know what you're facing, but I am releasing you to let you know you can shout unto God. We like to say all the time that our spiritual roots go way back to the children of Israel, and they do. People of God in the Old Testament, though, were shouting. Clapping, shaking, jumping, dancing, blowing the trumpet bunch. Jewish worship was enthusiastic. The early church followed suit and patterned its worship after the, uh, you look at it, they emphasize prayer, the reading and studying of scripture and singing and shouting of psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. When the people of the Bible clapped their hands and shouted, it was the Lord in response to, it was unto the Lord in response to his marvelous works and in response of who he was. It was not of a voice of, of defeat or fear, it was a voice of triumph. I tell you that in order for a battle to be effective, a, a, a battle cry, if you will, it needs to be as loud as possible. I wonder, does your praise or, or, or your faith, does it strike fear in the heart of the enemy? Mom, Dad, do you still have that shout, that triumphant expectation that Jesus Christ is going to come through? Young people or young adults, do you still have that understanding and that confidence that I'm going to pursue God with all that I have? And no matter what I'm up against, I am going to shout unto him and bless his name. I'm thankful to be a part of a church that hasn't forgotten about the importance of a shout of triumph unto the Lord Jesus Christ. The praise we give God is not the cry of the weak. The clapping that we do is not the motions of the feeble. Our voice is not the whimper of the defeated. My dance is not my last trip to the dance floor. The voice of New Life Austin is a shout, and it is a shout with a voice of triumph. Come on, honey, you need to hear me tonight. I'm trying to let you know that if you'll just get beyond what you feel, if you'll just push beyond the circumstances and just begin to exalt Jesus Christ, I'm trying to let you know that victory is imminent. You've got a reason to praise God. You've got a reason to shout unto him and bless his name. All you need to do is look at his resume. Look at his track record. Look and remind yourself, has he ever let me down? Has he ever failed me? And you'll know the answer. And then all of a sudden, you get a praise in your spirit. You begin to lift your hand. You begin to lift your hands. You understand. I've got to shout with a voice of triumph. Will you do that now and magnify him? Come on and bless his name. Come on and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. 
Hallelujah. We understand the God we serve is a great God. We understand that he's able. Oh, one of the passages we read tonight, Numbers, no misfortune is seen in Jacob. No misery observed in Israel. The Lord, their God, is with them. The shout of the king is among them. See, this shout being mentioned is a shout that is raised when a victory is obtained. The theme of the psalm is the kingship of the Lord. And this victory was the shout and the way that they would welcome their king. Think about that for a moment. The shout that they were giving was a shout that would welcome their victorious king. They had the joy that God's presence was with them. They had the confidence that God who led them out of Israel was with them and he was not going to forsake them. I want you to know that God that we serve is not going to forsake you. The God that we serve is with you. And I want you to know he's well able to deliver. Honey, all you have to do like the scripture we read is stand still and position yourself. Not position yourself. You, the beautiful thing about this is all you get to do is to celebrate the victory. Some of y'all not hearing me. Uh, I'm just, let me say that one more time. It's the, the battle is God's. And all you have to do is position yourself and celebrate the victory. Hey, you might not have the job you want right now. But I'm trying to tell you, honey, God will provide. He is your employer. You can shout right now. You might not have that healing yet in your body, but you know more. he is a God who is able to heal. I'm trying to tell you, honey, you can sit on the sidelines and position yourself to celebrate and magnify God. He is indeed well able. Oh, he's well able. You know what's, what I love about a spirit-filled Pentecostal apostolic church? Is It's so vibrant and demonstrative. If you are accustomed to or you are interested in having quiet church, you're not going to enjoy heaven. Because heaven is going to be loud. See, we use a decibel meter here to make sure nobody's ears are bleeding and keep the sound at safe levels, and I think we should do that. But I can give you one assurance about heaven. It's going to be filled, honey, with a battle cry from the saints of Almighty God that are shouting unto him with a voice of triumph. The shout of a king is going to be in that place. It's going to pro be proclaiming. It's going to be thundering. It's going to be a loud and joyful noise. And if you are a spirit-filled believer, I'm trying to tell you what I feel in my spirit, and I'm presenting it to you tonight. One of the greatest weapons that God has given you, that he's equipped you for, to outfit you for, is your praise. More particularly, let me be more specific, not just your praise, but your shout with a voice of triumph. Okay, let, let, let me, y'all, see what happened is, yeah, I've been preaching these youth camps, Bishop. You know what's amazing about praise? And when you shout, you can't be stressed when you praise. You, 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 you can't be worried when you shout. As a matter of fact, you know people who are demonstrative and exuberant in their praise and in their worship? They're not like, man, you, you rarely see them down down the hallway. I wonder if we're going to make it. 
I, 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 I just don't know how the Lord's going to bring us through. They have a confidence. You, you know, they got obstacles that they're up against, and they got a smile on their face. Hello? Something, body might be diagnosed with something, and they can still lift their hands. I'm trying to tell you right now, honey, you got an it is a, it is the shout in your spirit. I'm trying to let you know you are not defeated. Let me tell you what I see in the forecast. I see victory in the forecast. And because victory is in the forecast, honey, you got a right to shout unto God. You have a right to bless his name. You are not defeated. You are not a loser. You are an overcomer. And you ought to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Somebody clap your hands unto the Lord. If you know you're victorious, somebody open up your mouth and shout unto God. See, sometimes you can... I'm not minimizing it. I believe we should. You can pray and you can fast and you better do all those things. But sometimes, sometimes you have to be willing to lose your mind and just declare this battle is not mine. I don't own it. So I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to do my dance. I'm going to shout with a voice of triumph. Come on and do it now. Somebody bless his name. I'm trying to tell you, honey, your breakthrough is on the way because God is able. And you know what I love about the church? Don't sit down. You know what I love about the church? We have all types of people here in the church. You got rich people, and you got, you got poor people, and you got doctoral studies, and you got graduate degrees and undergraduates. You got high school dropouts. You got the vast array of folks you can think of. Black, white, brown, yellow. You got rhythm, and you got some who have no rhythm. Can't clap on beat to save their life. But honey, a shout is not a black thing. And a shout is not a white thing. A shout is not an old thing. I'm trying to tell you, you got a right to shout unto God. You want to strike fear in the enemy? You better let him know God's got my back. I can lift my hands. I can do a dance unto God. Some of y'all hear me, but the rest of you, you know what? I was preaching Louisiana Men's Conference, and this, this elder had to be in his 80s. He just, it didn't make a difference what kind of song it was. He just kind of, I said, I said, Brother Dean, I said, do you know her story? He said, no, I, I don't. And he just, see, some of you can do that right now. Others, you can lift your hands. Somebody else might go like this. Somebody else can jump for jump. Honey, but when you got the victory, whether you're 83 and this is all you got, or if you're 19 and you know God's on your side and you'll run three laps around this place, all I'm trying to tell you is God is able. Come on and praise him. Come on and bless his name. This is the equipment for the war, honey. It's your shout. It's your praise. This is how you win. Sometimes you got to tear the walls down. Sometimes you got to be willing to get unorthodox in your praise. See, sometimes you know what? We're all guilty of this. We've been in this for a while, and I'm comfortable, and I got my suit on, and I got the tuck just right. Got my hair done did. But you know what? Every once in a while, 
You want to know what creates an electric atmosphere that's filled with faith where God delivers? You want to know why the moment you begin to praise that backslider sitting on the back row has tears streaming down their face? It's because you have lifted up the banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Honey, it's not on your own. It's nothing you can do. But if it's been a while since you've given God some unorthodox praise, tonight is the night. If you haven't clapped your hands in a while, you better begin to clap them. If you haven't jumped in a while, honey, I would suggest you get to jumping. I'm going to say this and then... I'm going to get on to the message. I'm getting away from it. But you know what? What's fascinating about David, you all know the story. <laughs> he had the Ark of the Covenant, right, Mama? And they had it on a cart. And it had fallen. It was falling off the cart. And Yuza went to go catch it, Andrew. And as he went to go catch it, what happened? Did. And David was hot. It was hot. And so he left it. He left it at gentleman's house over DM in. There, God was blessing. And David, David caught wind of it and said, what in, what is going on? And so they go back to get the, the Ark of the Covenant. And this time, they didn't put it on a cart. But they had these long sticks, these staves, and they put them through the hooks, the Ark of the Covenant. And they put those staves on their shoulders. And as they were ushering in the presence of the Lord, David said he was going to do something very intentional. He decided every six steps he was going to praise the Lord. See, there's something amazing happens when, you, when you're ushering in a praise. I'm trying to tell you, when you usher in a praise, deliverance is, it's on its way. When you when you'll usher in a praise, the miraculous is coming down the road. Is anybody hearing me? When you'll usher in a praise, I'm trying to tell you right now, if you, I'm, going, I'm only doing this because I feel it. I'm just trying to, I feel like somebody's about to receive a breakthrough. I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that with all sincerity. And it's because of your shout. It's got nothing to do with you, but it's your confidence in God. They praised him. They stopped every six steps and praised the Lord. I'm going to give you an opportunity every six steps to magnify God. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Honey, that's it. It's intentional praise. It's victorious praise. It's I've got to praise him right now. It's my deliverance is on the way. My joy, it's unspeakable and full of glory. Are you ready? We're going to do it one more time. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and praise him. Be unorthodox with your praise. You're That's it. That's it. Go ahead. Loose yourself in the spirit. L Magnify the Lord. This is how you overcome. This is how you get your joy back. This is how you let the devil know we win. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Here's what we're going to do. I want everyone to stand. Help us, Holy Ghost. Musicians, sounds like one of y'all already there. All right. Musicians, come. There's three other things I want to put in your spirit. Two others. One, it's obedience. Doing what God says to do, even when you don't understand. 
See, that song we just sang, and I had no idea we were going to sing it. It talks about it. And if our God is for us, then who can? So we sang that, right? And we understand God's before us. But when you look at that passage, I believe it's out of, I know it's in Romans 8. I'm going to say 31, 32, right around there. But when it's there, really the Lord, when you look it up and you study it in the Greek, he's above us. See, there's something about living under his lordship. Living in obedience, not our own standards that we've constructed or erected. I'm talking about his living in obedience to his word. When they were marching around the walls of Jericho, they had to do it. Keep stepping. Keep marching. See, you have to obey God even when you don't understand. Even when it makes no sense, even when things aren't going your way, you've got to learn to obey God. I'm talking about equipment for spiritual warfare. You've got to learn to obey God. And then the other thing that they did was they did this every day. It was, it was doing the right things every day. Faithfulness, sacrificial worship, giving, prayer. We have to do that day after day after day after day. But sometimes when it seems all else is failing... What you have to do is shout. And this is one of the most powerful weapons we possess. And sometimes it's an old school Pentecostal shout where you have just forgotten on how to be dignified. We need aisle runners. We need people hitting the preacher on the pulpit. We need people jumping up and down and shouting in the middle of the message. Honey, you want your walls to come down? then there's no better way than to shout with a celebratory shout unto Almighty God. I'm talking about when your pack is up against the wall, you don't know what else to do. The devil's fighting you with all that he has, and you're feeling low. Don't wait till the battle's over. Shout right now. Go ahead and do it. See, praise, it ensures the active presence of the Lord being with us. Oh, don't ever underestimate the difference that a shout makes. There's going to be times the enemy's going to raise his ugly head. But when you shout with a voice of victory and triumph, I'm here to let you know you win. You win. Here, you know what? I'm re I, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I'm reaching every head bowed, every eye closed. Somebody, what the Lord has been doing these last several weeks is we're bringing us out of a dry place. And Brother Klein Dance, Pastor, I've been talking about it for weeks, the, mir the miraculous. And we are now in this, this season of release. Somebody is frustrated, hurt, jaded, burnt out, fatigued, and you've lost that joy. Can I tell you where you find your joy? It's in the presence of Almighty God. And the way you get into His presence is through praise. God inhabits the praises of his people. And if you are feeling dry in your spirit, or you want God, you need God to do a miracle in your life tonight, this altar is open. The Spirit of God is here. Would you come? Please don't miss this. I'm here to let you know that you're getting ready to, to re-engage some equipment to, to achieve the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus. If that, look at that. Come on, come on. I'm trying to tell you right now, the cares of this life may have sapped you dry, but I'm telling you under the unction of the Holy Ghost, some of you are going to receive a renewal tonight that's going to let you know not only has God never left you, but that you are indeed going to win. Come on, come on. You've been wrestling and fighting too long. 
Come on, seems like you keep running into a brick wall. Can't get a breakthrough. Can't get a smile. I'm trying to tell you, honey, this is for you. By faith, I want you to lift your hands. Come on, that's it. And I want you to begin to worship the Lord. I want you to begin to magnify Jesus. This is a very personal worship experience. I believe right now God will begin to instruct you and tell you how to worship him and how to surrender the battle unto him. I'm trying to tell you right now your victory is coming. Your deliverance is coming. Your joy is being restored. Victory is in your forecast, honey, and it's coming right now. Would you begin to worship him? Would you begin to thank him? Would you begin to shout unto him? Would you begin to believe God for the victory? Come on, that's it. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Come on and position yourself for the victory. Come on, that's it. You will get your breakthrough. Your marriage will make it. You'll get a better job. Honey, don't give up. Watch God do it. Watch God do it. Ministry team. Ministry team, help us pray.